What if I told you that in 2009, one of the gods of the grunge music scene released a pop album? Not only was this album produced by Timbaland, DJ, please, pick up your phone. I'm on the request line. Yes, that Timbaland, but it also featured background vocals from teen pop star Justin Timberlake. This scenario that I've just laid out for you was not some peyote-induced fever dream. This really fucking happened. Stick around as we take a deep dive into Chris Cornell's 2009 solo pop record, Scream. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Growing up, I loved alternative rock, and I even owned some Soundgarden and Audio Slave CDs, but I would never have considered myself a huge Chris Cornell fan back then. Up until recently, I hadn't really dove into all of Cornell's material, and I kind of wrote him off as a drab, gloomy singer who really only had two gears, that sleepy kind of mumble singing or screaming like a fucking banshee out of hell. So I joined in with all the other people who were just roasting Chris Cornell at the time. The main optic of the situation was here you have a middle-aged guy trying to do his own version of pop music as some kind of midlife crisis career change-up. On the surface, the whole thing felt contrived as all hell, with some people questioning if Chris Cornell had lost his goddamn mind. Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails even joined in on the bashing with this infamous tweet. Ouch. After leaving Audio Slave in 2007, Chris Cornell released his second solo album that same year called Carry On. The album did well enough and received decent reviews from critics. Then, in 2009, Cornell approached the then pop star producer genius Timbaland to remix some of his songs from the Carry On album. But instead of Timbaland simply doing some remixes for Cornell, he expressed his desire to do an entire album of new material. Cornell, never wanting to shy away from musical exploration, accepted and the album Scream was banged out in just six weeks. Now for those of you who don't remember or weren't born yet, Timbaland was one of the most sought after producers of the 2000s. He made several huge hit songs for mega pop stars such as Justin Timberlake, Madonna, Jay-Z, and Missy Elliott. And speaking of Missy Elliott, she was the main one who would put Timbaland front and center in her music videos and shout out his name in her songs. They were a really big collaborative duo back then. And I feel like it was because of her that the mainstream even knew who this guy was. His production style definitely had a very distinct sound. His beats were very funky, glitchy, and, and glossy. Yes. Yes. It um, was a production style that was very unique to his sensibilities, and I almost feel like that sound locked those particular songs into that late 2000s sound, much like cheesy drum machines drenched in reverb reminds people of the 1980s. The Scream album dropped on March 10th, 2009, and though it debuted in the top 10, giving Cornell his first top 10 solo album, the album plummeted 55 places the second week, one of the largest second week drops for a top 10 album. The album received mostly negative reviews from all major media outlets, aside from Entertainment Weekly, which gave it a B+. The main criticisms of the album was that it felt generic, cold, inauthentic, and misguided. I mean, hearing This Bitch Ain't a Part of Me sung over and over by the guy who sang Black Hole Sun is a bit jarring to the brain. There are also a lot of hip-hop-inspired inflections in the lyrics and singing style that do not seem natural to Cornell in any way. So now that everyone is done laughing, I actually went back and listened to this album for the first time ever. And honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not great, it's not Soundgarden or Audio Slave, but it definitely has its moments. I think the biggest problem for this album was that it was misunderstood. Fans felt like Cornell was selling out in the most blatant and gaudy fashion, not realizing that this was simply a musical detour done for fun, and not some big midlife career change. 
With the benefit of hindsight, we can see that Cornell returned to his rock roots and all was well with the world. But at the time, there was no way to know what was going through Cornell's mind. So if you can listen to this record in that context, it's just a fun pop record with a grunge god doing vocals over the top of it. Obviously, this record wasn't meant to be taken super seriously, and it was never going to be beloved by the critical indie music darlings and bloggers and writers, but, you know, Chris Cornell's never gave a shit about any of those people anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you haven't listened to the Chris Cornell pop record Scream, I would recommend it. I would go as far as to say there's some hidden gems on the album. Um, when he passed away, they released his box set that contained his most critical cuts and some of the tracks from Scream made it onto that compilation so obviously people in the Chris Cornell camp thought that uh, there was some decent material on there. I'll put the, my favorite tracks in the description of this video but let me know have you heard this record and if you have what was your take on it. My name is Josh Cannon and as always hope you have a good rest of your night. <laughs>